Now what, um, actually, what are we going to be creating as, as the audience starts chiming in? What are you going to be working on today? You know, it's so funny because I actually was in Germany and then I um, drove down to Austria oh, and I yeah. filmed some really amazing stuff out there. Nice. I haven't been home yet in three weeks. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, okay. So you've really been on the road. Like this, yeah. is like, this is like your last stop before Yeah, home? I'm like inching back time zones. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, like, I'm going to do a vlog. From there. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, so just like running through the process of like how I do that stuff. Your kind of secret sauce and putting together your vlogs. Yes. Now, again, for those of you sort of unfamiliar with Rachel's history, and um, you can again catch her episode of Make It on the uh, Adobe Creative Cloud YouTube channel. Um, it really began with a blog 10, 15 years ago. Oh my God, don't what? say 15. That's so long. Three years ago? <laughs> Some time ago when really blogging was still very <laughs> new. And uh, so, I, you know, it's the, <laughs> I, we've just been in the studio too long today. And, um, and you kind of parlayed that into this, this, you know, your YouTube channel and sort of growing this audience and just having this very real kind of approach to everything that you're talking about, whether it's makeup arts or just lifestyle in general. And, um, mm -hmm. and this is really kind of what, what brought you to us. And I think this is going to be awesome to actually see the pro what you talked yeah. about. We've talked about the process. Yeah. Now we kind of get to see it too. Yeah. Which is great. All right. So we've got Washington State. <laughs> Alice Cooper's illegitimate son right here. Yes, I met Alice Cooper a week ago today. Did you really? Yeah, I went to see him in concert, uh, got to meet him afterwards. It was freaking awesome. Oh my gosh. Oh, really hi, cool. Issy. Hi, Issy. Hey, Gus, what is happening? And April. Her from Austria. I loved Austria, by the way. It's so beautiful. Nice to see you, Malvov. Okay, um, so... You ready? Oh my god. Should we start? We've got, hey, we I'm got, shaking. we got plenty of time. <laughs> I don't Remember, know what I'm going to do for two hours. I'm just going to stare at you. Well, okay. Well, <laughs> you know, some people might say that would be weird, but <laughs> I'm okay with that. No, we're going to, remember, when in doubt, we're just going to do a little ASMR. I love ASMR. Just do it very quietly. I'm just going to brush your hair. <laughs> <laughs> I have hairbrush over there. Okay. All right. Okay, hey Cedric, what is happening? Evil Cerise, always good to see you here. All right, so um, so we will start the process. Now, is this kind of your your typical workflow? Like in terms of, now how did you capture this footage? Let me start there. What did you shoot with? Um, okay, so I was, <clears throat> it was in Austria. Right. And um, I had my friend with me and she's like an amazing videographer. Okay. Well, actually no, she's an amazing photographer. Okay. Hasn't really dabbled much into videography, but like we were just filming a ton of stuff out there. And um, I had this idea for a video a while ago. I don't even remember how I got this idea, but I like have everything written out in my journal. Okay. And I was just looking through and I was like, wait, that's a great idea. And um, the title of the video is called A Love Letter to Our Individuality. Oh. And I just felt yes. like we were going to such a serene, like yeah. pure place. Yeah. I was just like, this is such a perfect time to like for myself to like right. unwind and kind of discover. Yeah. Mm. And I just kind of wanted to capture like a mood I've been feeling lately about like kind of our homogenous world and also like create it into a video format. So I have like no idea how this video is going to turn out. That's okay. kind of like how I do everything. So we're going to get to see like raw footage, not even cut up or anything quite Yeah, yet. like very raw, that's awesome. very like no system to any of it. So that's why I'm like really, really nervous. <laughs> no, this is this is exactly what people want to see. I mean, oh, that, yeah. that's the thing. Hey, and this speaks to your whole vlog sort of style anyway, right? Yes, yes. No makeup in this process. This is the, you know, wake up out of bed and let's just start going through the footage. Let's just do it. Let's just oh do God, it. I'm okay. ASMR with Jason. Okay. That could be arranged. <laughs> How sensitive is this mic? Super sensitive. Yeah, I really, really want to do ASMR one day. Okay. We can maybe do it later this week. <laughs> this is very strange for people internally watching right now. I have no idea what's happening. I don't know ASMR. <laughs> 
What is the plan? So Raphael, as you just heard, we are going to cut Rachel's latest vlog from a recent trip to Austria. Where have you been in Austria? Um, I just drove from Munich down. Oh, okay. So I was in um, Bizau, mm -hmm. but I more remember this area called Egg. I thought that was so cute. I don't know why I'm leaning in. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. You're fine. You can just. <laughs> you're good. <laughs> All right. Cool. All right. I'm going to have a swig of water. Have a swig. All right. We'll let more people continue to tune in. Um, and yeah, so like now I'm curious when you're sort of starting the process, do you do you do kind of a similar thing? Like with, like with photos, obviously, and I learned this from Terry White years ago you know, 450 photos or something, and I just start going through and I'm flagging. Mm, it's mm -hmm. like, you know, good, bad, blurry, you know, bad, you know, yeah. it's half blurry. Years ago, did you used to keep half blurry photos? Because you're like, oh, but the moment was so cute. Yeah. <clears throat> no, 450, sorry, no time for that. You know, get rid of it. Um, AJ Villetti, show us all the shortcuts and the secrets, please. Do you use shortcuts? I can't remember if you said you're a shortcut user. I I am on the keyboard, but I'm, um, I'm still, I'm still, yeah. Yeah. I still haven't quite mastered it. Yeah. You know, I'm just like. Maybe. You should know I'm like a, you know, I'm I'm, I, I'm terrible with shortcuts. Oh, are you? Yeah. Well, I really want to actually get one of those like keyboard covers that like. Yes, I have now the keyboard that has it on the keys. Oh. It's helping. Actually, I say that it helps because I can look and do it. I still can't remember them, but. Oh. <laughs> You'll learn. It's, it's like muscle memory. It's not happening. Memory. No, I could. You know, I am a concert pianist. Rachmaninoff, list, good. You know, Command V. I still it eludes me at times, so I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I that know. Is. It took me forever to figure out like when I transitioned. I think <laughs> I just figured it out from right. PC to Mac. And right. I've been on a Mac for like a 15 years. Right. Now. How long? No. Yeah. Know, really long. I love that. All right, let's get into Premiere. Let's make some magic. Oh my God, Rachel, look, look at the love, Heart look shapes. at the hearts in all in oh all God, shapes wait, and colors. I need to like go on my Insta stories. No. Okay. <laughs> Why are people so mean on the internet? Right now. All right, keyboard shortcuts are essential. So true, April Diamond, and that's what's so funny is I still know the same eight that I've known for um, 17 years. Brain just doesn't want to use anymore. Part of that, though, as I've said many times before, was because we used to tour around the world for Adobe, and when we would go into Germany or <clears throat> Sweden or the UK or Japan, um, we would use the regional keyboard and the regional operating system. Oh, So your keyboard shortcuts don't help you. But menu items are always in the same place. Wait, so if you're like using a French keyboard, then everything's different. different. It's not the same, right? Oh, so your muscle memory doesn't work in that favor. It's not the same, That's right? Nice. Same with Swedish keyboards. Same with. I mean, the, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, and, but you know, if you remember that uh, eight, oh, is it six? Yeah, I guess I've I guess I've learned two new ones. We can thank Logic Keyboard for that evil <laughs> series. Uh, but yeah, but it's true. But you know, if you want to remember file. You know, down to a menu item, export media. That's always in the same place. That's so even if you're in the Japanese OS, like you can still navigate. So that's how I kind of just I was really good at navigating the menus, like a super nerd. I love that. But you know, still like undo at times. Like, oh, what is it again? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. So, you ready? Oh my God! Do I have to really share my screen? We have to share your screen now. You can do it. I know you can do it. Rachel, how did you end up creating the style and mood on your Insta and in your videos? I don't know. I feel like I feel like it was just very inside of my body. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that sounded weird. <laughs> it came out a little weird, but I know what you mean. I mean, yeah, like it, it was it was you in this kind of picturized, you know, world. world. Yeah. That's real, but slightly surreal because you're on camera and it, it's yeah. a it's a performance. But again, kind of maintaining that natural you. I feel like Jason should just be me. <laughs> I can just interpret. <laughs> you really can answer everything way better than I can. <sighs> you're very kind. Oh. I really hope that link to the Instagram is right. What's Chinch Insta? I don't know. Yeah, is that that's not you? That I did not write that. Okay. No, that's our that's our buddy Gus. Oh, okay. Good. Is that actually Rachel's Instagram? Chic. Oh. Chic H Insta. Oh my God, but you spelled chic wrong. Yeah, it's just <laughs> C H I C Insta. Okay. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yeah, we don't know who that. But is. really, though, I think to answer that question, I do like think about like what I'm posting about a lot. But I think 
it stems a lot from like what I don't want to do. Right. Yeah. So like I I think I, you see so much that like you know like what you don't like. That's kind of how I go about it. Right. Filtering. When down. am I gonna start? Oh God. Okay. Yes. Well, this is my screen. Oh, look, we're like down here. Look at us. Like, oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, yes. That's what that's I what wish I had seeing. a cooler um, screensaver. It keeps like not doing it. You can, uh, it keeps changing. We can get you some like SF skyline or something if you'd like that while you're here. Yeah. Or not. Or you know, maybe one of your, we can take a screen, we can take a, a frame export from one of your Austria videos. Oh, from my background? Yeah. Oh, no, it's okay. Cause, oh. Because we're, we're going to. Um, Mountains. I really hope everything's turned off right now. Yep, it is. Okay. Um, I mean, I guess let's just start. Yeah, let's do it. Are we starting? We are oh, starting. God, I'm so nervous right now. I'm so <laughs> Thank you, Gus. We fixed it. All right. Okay. <laughs> Hello, guys. So how many of you guys um, edit videos and, like, do video stuff? Were you guys in the last show? Talk to us. Um, yeah. yeah. Wow. Right. Okay. By the way, there's a 30 second delay, so when you ask that, it'll take about 30 seconds so we see the response, okay. just, uh, just so you know. So, I think that one of the most important things when you start video editing is like organizing your files because right. that's like, you just want to make sure everything's in the right place and you know right. where to find it and it's like kind of a beast right. in its own way. Right. Now was this shot, did you do like iPhone and DSLR or mirrorless or so do you have like 4K? And... I had two cameras. Okay. So one was like on my little point and shoot and one was on um, a Canon 5D. Oh, okay. So yeah. you've got like 1080, yeah. 1080 footage. Okay, yeah. April's been watching all day. April, you probably learned so much today. I hope you soaked it in like a sponge. Okay. So, I'm going to be totally transparent up front. I'm not like a pro, you know, like, I'm not like in the most technical savvy. I can figure out what I need to do to like create something. I'll always like, the good thing about like doing anything is that you can just find anything on the internet right. and YouTube um, tutorials. Right. But uh, I think with video editing, what I can offer is like the way of storytelling and being able yes. to kind of figure out like which clips to put together, like right. kind of get getting the feel and rhythm of like the story you're trying to tell. Right. And um, in that case, I think um, Premiere is really amazing because it's so easy to like cut and drop, cut and drop. And also, um, I mean, that's like very basics yeah. of it, you know, and I think it's just learning the basics of it. And yeah. When I wanted to get technical, I did, and I, I've made some, like, really amazing stuff. Yeah. Um, well, and I think you just nailed it, too. It's, like, just the storytelling process. Like, editing in and of itself, I mean, you can kind of figure that out. It's really story, sequence, pacing, yeah. timing, you know. Um, all of these things are essential parts. And they're fundamentals, but, you know, it, it can take much longer to master those. Okay. Coco, I'm just starting to play around with your videos. Very nice. Rupam, very nice, thank you. <laughs> Make oh, a cat so jumping out of a window listening to Justin Bieber. Oh my gosh, I wish I could do that. We have to bring Andrew back up here. To... Okay, let me just make sure. I'm so afraid. <laughs> <laughs> He's already got it done. He's working on it. Okay. Um, okay, so, so I'm going to start a new project. Okay, yeah. And then... Don't put in my invoices because I did that last right. time and I lost my. Product. Okay, so while you're typing that in, so this is a great point, and I was just talking to one one of our internal people about this, is that the default location there is actually like for Mac users, it's inside of Documents, inside of an Adobe folder, inside of a Premiere folder, inside of a 10.0 folder. That's the default. Okay. I think many people don't even change that. Yeah, and, it glazed over me. And it went into like an invoice. So very important to. When you set the name of your project, also change the location of where it's going. I know that seems fundamental, but it is not uncommon. Uh, because then you're going, where is it? You know, why would it be in my invoices folder? Why would it be inside of documents and, you know, five levels deep? Okay. I'm, like, terrified of making, like, really dumb typos. No, right now. please. Make typos. Over um, yeah, so I do new project. Yeah. And I put it in where all my files are. So, nice. like, I kind of have right here in my... Um, my external, which I bring with me everywhere because right. I have two computers. Right. So, but that's never felt fragmented to me. Mm -hmm. Um, because I have it all here. Right. Um, I prefer teal. 
That was a question on there. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> so this is the video I'm going to be working on. Um, I have all my footage here from my little vlog camera. Nice. Um, all the footage that Francis filmed of me. Let's pray that it's all okay. Oh, um, okay. This is actually the voiceover that you need to help me record Yes, later. and we'll record this a little bit later. Cool. And I think Rupam was actually asking, prefer teal and orange, you know, those are the sort of signature colors that are used often in color grading. Made very famous in the original um, Transformers movie. Really? When, if you remember, like, all skin tone was orange. Oh. And then juxtaposed against that was like all the other, the opposite tones, it was teal, it's this teal and orange style of grading. And it's, you know, they, they exist on complete opposite ends of the color spectrum. So it, it just, it pops in this very unnatural, oh. sometimes to some nauseating way. That sounds very dynamic. It's, but it's dynamic and yeah. it, it, it started a trend, but it was definitely, you could see like in the industry, just oh. absolute love hate because you wouldn't really have those Can two. Can I Google that right now? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can. But let's let's sorry I'll Google it you, you okay yeah. see I'm sorry I get ADD and like I just am terrible okay, at you. editing I'm so oh. terrified that my screen is broadcasted right now because I will like I just sit and Google things all day long you are so fine <laughs> we also have a kill switch oh, God. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's see that's right blockbuster color looks exactly Rupa. I'm gonna import right everything Yeah, sure. Now, again, if you, and this is what I was asking before now, you can't, have you played much with the media browser? Oh yeah, in yeah. here. So you can do that too, only because then you can kind of quickly scrub through it, do a hover scrub. Yeah. So yeah, wait, wait so until the thumbnails come in. So yeah, oh, so yes. like. Oh yeah, that's how I do it. Yeah, and if you hover over them, they'll play. And then of course, if you click on it, you'll have your little play head and you can kind of scrub through them that way. Yeah. Um, anyway, I mean, you've got a lot, so maybe it's worth just kind of bringing it all in. Yeah. What do you, like, way. prefer? Do you prefer to import it into your project or using the media browser? Yeah, I mean, it, it depends. Again, I think, um, so, like, uh, we did a, um, a safari shoot in South Africa years ago. And actually, it was with Paul Tranny, who's out of there, and, and Terry White. And uh, a lot of shots were very long and nothing happened, or very short and very shaky because you're on like yeah. an open Jeep. <laughs> yeah. with, and I was using a 400 millimeter oh lens my gosh, it's like, yeah. with no stabilizer, with no tripod or anything. So I'm like, wow. I have big arms, you know, and whatever. Um, How did that footage turn out? <laughs> well, 79.6% <laughs> of it was absolute garbage. Oh no. But the 21% was awesome. Okay. And, uh, or 20.4%. I love a good creepy zoom. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, classic too, like 70s style, you know. Oh, so good. Really handheld. And um, uh, so for that stuff, yes, I did Media Browser for the really long clips mm, where like a lion sense. would just lift his head for one second. And that's all you want. I yeah. scrubbed through, got my in and out, and I dragged that bit in. Okay. But if you've not looked at any of this, I would yeah, I'd bring it all in. Okay. Yeah. Little control A, and you could. Oh, cause I, oh yeah, because you can do it straight from the media yeah, browser, right. huh? So I'm going to put that into my project. Yeah. And then we can start, you know, reviewing. And again, it depends how you like to work. Like some people, you can... Put folders. You can, yeah, you can obviously make folders or you can like go full screen on this mm -hmm. and then go into your um, icon view and again, review them that way. And if they're bad, I just like delete them right there, you know, out of the project. So they're not occupying... Right. Unnecessary space. Yeah, that's true. I kind of like it all in one project. So yeah. And like if I accidentally, mm -hmm. I don't know, for some reason. And these are just references, remember? They're not. Yeah. Yeah. yeah not like physical copies. Sure. Yeah, because it doesn't duplicate it, right? Nope. They're just they're just references. That's cool. Yeah. You can you can bring in new you know if you transcode or bring in new versions you can make new master clips from a, an existing clip, but no, by default, it's really just a reference. It's right. a point reference. So I feel like the rest of this process is gonna be quite boring, because in the sense that like, I'm just, you just scrub through like all your footage. Right. And I just start dragging, dropping, dragging, dropping with like right. no, no method to that madness yeah. at all. But that's it, you're kind of making your selects. And actually, um, AJ just brought up, brought up something so I don't know if you ever used the pancake timeline idea. Now you, you wouldn't need it right now, although you could. We have basically two blank timelines on top of each other. Uh -huh. So you use the top one for your like first pass selects. 
And then, okay, well. Is that too much for you? No, no, well maybe start doing it this way. We have a couple days, so maybe start doing it this way and then I'll show you as we bring in more footage. Okay. Um, you know, uh, but basically you can just have two timelines on top of each other, so you can have like your first pass selects and then from here, the ones that you really like, you drag down into what will be the final oh. timeline. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. That would be, I don't know if that would work in my favor or not. Because I kind of just like, I like to actually duplicate my, um, ah, my okay. timelines. Yeah. So that I have like all the original ones, but then like on the duplicated so you could, one, yeah. you just like start trimming. Start trimming. Yeah, so you could use pancaking for that too. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's basically, if you're doing that, that's what that is. Oh. That's it. Yeah. Cool. Coined by our uh, dear friend Vashi Nedomansky, editor and human extraordinaire. Oh yeah, very nice. Sorry, here very I familiar am uh, landscape here. Coming in here. Okay. Austria is so beautiful. Yeah. I felt like I was like in this like HD world the whole time. Can mm -hmm. they hear my screen? No. Should I turn it up? Uh, your is audio is going through HDMI. Because I would like um, to hear it myself. Are you hearing her audio, or we actually you know what? Here, we'll change it. I'll just we'll just do it through the speakers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna change your. Uh, two separate timelines in the timeline option. That's in pancake mode, right? Yes. Yes. Blue pound to answer your question. Right, let's make this this. Yeah. Everybody wants to go to Vegas. Everybody wants to go to Vegas. <laughs> I was asking people like, where do people want to go in the states? And they all say, uh, New York, Vegas, and LA. Right. Uh, Which is time. interesting. I, I, I mean, I guess you know, Vegas always shocks me a little. But I guess the first time in Vegas is it is really one of those spectacular. You have yeah, you have to see it to believe it because it's so not real. Yeah. That it is. It's an. It's an. It's a surreal experience. Um, so yeah, I guess that kind of makes sense. And L.A. and New York for kind of obvious reasons there. So here I am using my shortcuts. I for yep. in mm -hmm. space to play. Base again. Oh, that's a good shot. Oh, there yep. it is. Right. So then I use shift and then left. Right. So now do you do you ever JKL the shuttle that way? Oh yeah, to make make it faster. Mm -hmm. Or or Something. just or just to go back and forward regular time. Yeah, because K is your pause, J. Oh. Yeah. You do the same thing. JKL, no, I haven't. Yeah. Well I use L and J to yeah. like fast forward. Yeah. It's like really scrub fast. Yeah. Okay. So this is five D stuff? Oopsies. This actually is on my point and shoot. Oh, okay. This looks nice. So what I do is I do new time or new item. This option's really cool because I really like the adjustment layer option. Oh yeah. That's really awesome. Um, I've used color mat a lot on this. Um, yeah, let's just start a new sequence. And I do from DSLR. Yeah, this is. I normally do on 40, 24 frames. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And I'm assuming that's probably what, how you shot it, how your friend shot it on the 5D. I, I really hope so. We can And we can verify. Let's I mean, verify. You, okay, so if you pull in a piece of 5D footage. Here's can, 5D. Okay. So if you just go to your flyout right here, and there's the preview area. It's the only time you ever want to show this. Okay, so it was actually shot at 2997. Mm. So that's fine. So now one of the nice things is Premiere, you can have in a 2997 timeline, you can have 24, you can have 25, you could have 60. Yeah. It'll all conform to 2997. Okay. Best if you kind of, now having said that, let's go to your point and shoot and see what it was shooting at. Okay. So it's also shooting at 2997. Oh, so not yeah. that you can't have it in a 24 frame timeline. I just made that up probably. <laughs> no, no, that's, that would be, you know, <laughs> 24, you know, 23976 for your DSL, that's kind of how you get that film style look. So right. ultimately, if that's what you want, no reason not to do that. And when I import, like, or like if I have a sequence that's 24 frames per second, mm -hmm. I'm using 29, 
frames footage. Footage, yeah. Does it slows it? It, it kind of makes it's, it like a little bit quicker. Well, it's obviously you're ha it's having to to uh, sacrifice some frames, but visually it really shouldn't look any. I mean, that's part of the brilliance of its kind of real time conversion. And during rendering, it's it's virtually seamless. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's do that again. Let's do new sequence. Because then I could do. Um, yeah, you could just do that. Or if you just cancel out of there too. You can just right click on the clip in question or control click and do new sequence from clip and then it automatically oh. builds it in the correct frame size frame nice rate. shortcuts let's yeah. see what this looks like have you seen the movie the lobster has anyone seen the lobster <laughs> i have not seen the lobster oh it's such a great movie but um this this place that we stayed at was like so cinematically beautiful and uh -huh. like that's what really inspired me to create like this short film about it yeah. but a lot of the shots in the lobster were like um i don't know like the correct terminology for this but like it was like on a tripod and was just like still mm -hmm. and then like an action would happen right yeah. and i just thought that was so like, oh yeah such an interesting way to so shoot. like a locked off shot a locked off shot okay, exactly yeah, yeah. yeah it was a locked off shot so we have so in this I have like a lot of locked off shots, which necessarily really isn't my style. I kind right. of do like way more vloggy where I like have the camera I'm out. saying, yeah, more sort of, yeah, rogue style where it's moving kind of with your body. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. But That's this cool. one's like locked off, yeah. which um, Again, it's gonna kind have of a like, new discovery of you in this new location. Yeah, yeah. so I'm, I'm, I've actually been really excited to play around with this footage. Sweet. Um, right. So that's cool. I'm gonna just not put that in my okay. right now. Yeah. Uh, Rupam, is this S-Log profile footage or standard? I'm guessing standard, um, unless your friend had some kind of special uh, mm. camera profile or LUT on her 5D. What does that mean? It's a it's a color profile. It's not, oh, um, I do change my color profile. Yeah. Like, so is it when it says like contrast? Uh, yeah. So yeah, yeah. And yeah. but uh, but I I don't know with I, I do you know which 5D it was? Mark three. Mark probably. three. Okay. Yeah. I don't even think 5D Mark three does S-Log. Um, but so you're saying though you actually change it to like a neutral or like flat, no contrast, no saturation. Uh, I don't change it so that I can go back and re-edit or like color grade it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not quite that advanced. Okay. Well, I'm not, it's not that I'm not that advanced, but I just I don't. Right. So you just go into like a standard or a neutral. Yeah, I kind of get try to get the um, color I like right off the camera. Right, and that's legit too. So yeah, we're gonna just say we're gonna say standard. What do I think happened at the end? What is my interpretation of it? I kind of don't remember, but I remember, I think if I'm just gonna go off the forefront of my memory, I think he cut his eye out. Okay, now I'm intrigued. Now I think now, that's all I remember. I, I don't even remember lobster. like the movie that much. All right. <laughs> Must've been fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, okay. So, you know, I just double click on all this and I'm just scrubbing yeah. through. This is me like trying to. Now, are you bike riding while filming here? No, I'm in the car right Oh, now. okay. That's a cool shot, though, too. What's the shortcut to drop into the sequence? Because I've just been dragging. Um, yeah, it's if you hover over those, it'll tell you. Again, those are the ones, like, it's either a period or a, uh, or a comma. I, I can't ever remember those. Yeah. Also, by the way, another cool little tip here. If you drag this to the program monitor, See these little drop zones? This yeah. is a cool tip for everybody watching. This was added a year ago. So you can tell it where to go, like exactly where it appears in the sequence. That's really cool. Way cooler than these freaking old school button thingies. That's really cool. Yeah. Well, you learn something new. That's right. So those drop zones, yeah, um, they're introduced. Yeah, maybe it's even two years ago now. I kind of forget. I learned so much when I'm here at Adobe. It's really great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really excited to see the final products. Oh, thank you, Renice. Renice? Yeah. That's sweet. Nice. Hey, Zima. Hey, Vanessa. Just cruising through. I was actually going to work with um, uh, Luke. Mm -hmm. uh, his Instagram is, uh, wow, I'm totally blanking. Visual spectrum. Velvet Spectrum. Velvet Spectrum, right. Yeah, he is amazing. Yeah. Um, we were actually going to work together, and he was going to maybe put in, like, some of his 
3D art into this video. Oh, so nice. I, that's why I took a lot of like really stagnant shots. Right. Yeah, right. You want something locked off if you're gonna have like cool like manipulated text. 3D and text. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Evil Cerise, yeah. Um, Chavez, yeah, right? That's just one of those things. It, uh, I'm sure I've talked about it at some point. They just, uh, yeah. Oh my Jason. god, I want paragliding. These Jason are like Cooper. paragliders. How cute is that? Oh, very nice. Oopsie. So let me ask you, Oopsies. as I'm partially yawning, when you, um, do you, do you ever stabilize your stuff? Mm. Talking about like handheld, do you use a stabilizer? Like in post? Or? In post, yeah. In Premiere or uh, Matrix? Not really. Not really. Sometimes if like the shots are just, just like unbearable. Too shaky, yeah. Tobias, thanks for joining us. Mm. Hola, San Francisco Discovery. Yeah, Rupam saying those shots there, you could do a really nice like zoom transition between them. I agree, it would look really nice. Oh, that's cool. That's a really nice shot too. Thank you. So these are all just kind of like you're driving along the motorway, presumably here. Yeah. Kind of capturing the landscape. I like having these shots too, to kind of like, mm -hmm. uh, um, It's like an establishing shot. Exactly. And like having to put like text over it, or like, even if I just like am waiting for part of the song to drop or right. a beat to kick in, just having like nice right. buffer footage. But that's a good point. Do you, in this process typically, hello silent infernos, um, are you usually kind of doing this in silence or do you want, do you typically have some kind of music or something? Like uh, do you have a music idea in mind already or you're just kind of assembling at this point? I'm just assembling at this point, okay. but actually a lot of times when I travel, um, I, I have like a little playlist that I like go off of and I usually like try to find music um, as I'm traveling. I really like that like, I really liked this song when I was in Austria. The song was so good. Actually, it was Otis. Oh, nice. Yeah. But with YouTube, you kind of have to like... Um, right, if it's commercial music, yeah, and yeah. you're monetizing. Yeah. They make it easier now, fortunately. They do? They do. Okay. They'll say, hey, Rachel, when that's chic, you're using music that's owned by someone else. But it's okay. Yeah, you, you can still have... share in the revenue. No, they should be. You should, you should be able to share in the revenue. Really? Yeah. I have not seen that. I know that. I haven't seen that option. I've seen the option where, like, if you make a cover of a song, you can right. share the revenue. Oh no, you should be able to share it. Yeah. Here's a here's a little tip for you guys. Yeah. I like to go on to YouTube has this area called Music Policies. Mm -hmm. So like this song that I just played. Mm -hmm. Let's see. And it just on. depends, by the way. That also depends on what the licensor allows via YouTube. Yeah. Right. So yeah. So it's cool um, for anyone who like makes videos and posts it on YouTube. Right. Um, seeing all the music policies for this, so like the right. song I just played. Yeah, so do, do they allow revenue sharing for that tune? Mm. You know what this one doesn't really say, doesn't say. I don't think. Interesting. I think. Yeah, I mean obviously if it's gonna be like, you know, the Beatles, forget it, right? You can't, yeah. they're not gonna let you monetize that at all. But, you know, for, for lesser known artists, um, yeah. I've certainly encountered it. I've encountered it with my own commercial music. Really? Where I'm using my own song in a video, and I own the publishing, and it says some other publisher, it, you know, they don't, YouTube doesn't know I'm the publisher, so they're right. like, hey, you can still make money from this, but you have to share the rest. <laughs> sure, I'll share with myself. Oh, wow, Lemon Twigs is on here. But yeah, this okay. is such a great way to like look at what kind of songs you can right. be using. Do and, you like, use like libraries of royalty free stuff or any? Rarely. Stock things? I usually okay. do if I'm using like a project and working with like um, a brand or something. Like a like brand that. or yeah. company because I know that's like a little bit more tiptoey, mm -hmm. I think. Sure. But for my own stuff, I just kind of do whatever. Um, I just want to check something else. Okay. Like beach. Let's see. Beach. Let's and while Rachel's doing that, I wanted to remind everyone that we have a contest going on, which you are an oh, integral yeah. part of. The Make It Impactful yeah. contest. Who wants to win a thousand dollars? Because I sure do. Win a thousand dollars. Thousand dollars. A year of Creative Cloud. Yep. And a one-hour mentoring session with tête à tête 
Avec with myself that's or right. Volzi. That's right. Um, so that's hashtag make it impactful. Is she coming on the live show? Uh, she won't be on this live show this week, but I'm sure we'll have oh. her. I'm sure we'll have her back again. Oh, yeah, she's again. awesome. She's awesome. So yeah, that's uh, again. If you want to find out more about that, you can actually just from within Twitter if you just search hashtag make it impactful. Um, and actually, I was gonna say Evil Cerise or Nightbot will uh, pull the link up there for you, and uh, uh, let you know what you need to do there. Yeah. Oh, our knees. Yeah, that, that hopefully helps. Also, um, I usually another tip I try doing is I just like browse through Bandcamp or SoundCloud forever, and um, usually if it's not Shazamable, it's pretty safe. Right. No. Well, that's it. And that's the thing is if it's not, you know, and I say this much if it's if you can't, if you can't, if it's not on Spotify, Apple Music, Google Play, yeah, non-issue, yeah, because that's the, the same digital distribution services that work with those three mm -hmm. also supply to YouTube Red, YouTube, yeah. and all the subsequent partners of that. Yeah, yeah. If it doesn't, if it, if you can't Shazam it, it's pretty safe. You're safe. Yeah. I mean, not that you want to rip someone off either, but the but idea is that. But it takes forever. Right, yeah. I mean, like. What am I trying to say? Or you phone a friend and say, hey, would you compose something for me? Oh, I wish I had friends that can compose music. I know one. Looks like Chris Garcia does. That's very impressive. Yes. Does Adobe have any um, music programs to like compose your own music? We do. What is it called? Adobe Audition. We also have royalty-free, 5,000 pieces of royalty-free music. And videos and everything, which I've used before. Right. And it's super right. awesome. I created those. Did you really? Did. Called the Wow. Yeah. Wow, 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 wow. So you'll see that when we do the voiceover. I'll, I'll show you where that is. Oh, yeah. I, I need to do a voiceover for this video. Yeah. So I know everything's Shazamable. It's like so hard to find a song that's not Shazamable. Right. But again, if it's not commercially distributed, it won't be. Yeah. But you'd yeah. be surprised. Like even the most indie, indie stuff you find. Indie, like, Indie's oh. fine it, if they have commercial distribution, which is yeah. not. It's not expensive today. Like that's the thing, right? Yeah. That's why so much is like you'll find almost anything on Shazam because it takes very little. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Oh, and Evil Cerise with the link there. Very nice, dude. YouTube ban your video. What happened? Ah, oh, see, this is such a good clip because that's like, a fantastic shot. Yeah. I kind of wanted to like add this clip to like a voice that's like. Oh my god, that's gonna sound so cheesy. Maybe I don't even want to do it anymore, but like, oh, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. Ah. Look at you. <laughs> you're, you're very funny. Am I? See, but you can I say think you that. Just laugh at me. No, you can say that, and yeah, there is some cheese in there, but you know, that's okay. Because there is light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> it's okay to be literal, you know. Someone just asked what, oh. Uh, no, Mayor Gordon, the Lupology music beds are completely royalty free. I made them for you to use anywhere. So have at it. All right, through this clip. Okay, let's see. And then if it has the blue thing right here, that means it's in the timeline or the sequence. Yep. Let's see. And again, just to be very clear on that. They are protected by copyright. In other words, you can't resell or repackage and redistribute those music beds as music beds. They are royalty free, though, for usage in your own productions. <clears throat> if you want to get into legal speak. Oh, I'm just laughing at like. <laughs> is that your friend there? Okay. <laughs> Where is he sawing? That's good. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Got a variety of different clips here. I can see why, you know. So is, is this, are you just now? Oh, that's you. Are you just now? We have to go full screen on that. No, this is so embarrassing. Oh my god. <laughs> Uninterrupted full screen. Do you know that shortcut? <laughs> no. Okay. You're just pressing buttons. Okay. <laughs> this is so cheesy. Look how high I got him. I, you, you got some air right there. Ba boom. Yes. Oh my gosh, help me. How do I get back? How do I get off my full screen? Thank you. Yeah. See, I don't know all the shortcuts. That's, I would have, that's like, one of the eight that I know. The okay. shoot could be more cool in slow motion. Yeah, so we, you, yeah, I mean, you time remap some stuff. You, sl you slow mo things occasionally, right? Actually, only once. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, 
because one time when I was shooting with Francis, she really didn't know how to use, um, like, how to do video. Right. Oh, okay. And so then she, kinda... I think she filmed it accidentally in, like, 50 frames per second or something. Oh, okay. Oh, so it was actually a decent looking slow-mo then. Yeah. Because you had extra frames. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's hard to do slow-mo um, when you didn't prep for it in advance and shoot it in the yeah. right frames per second. Because I think that's one of my bigger pet peeves is, like, when you slow down, like, like yeah. anything, just, and it looks like it's just yeah. a... Now, if you want to test it on this footage, you know, we do have something called optical flow. Oh, I've seen that. It's not guaranteed. No. It can absolutely not work well. Yeah. But it can it, look mushy, right? It can look mushy. And that's the thing is, um, but it depends. Like, so there's three methods with us. We have sampling, blending, and optical flow. Sampling is typically... <laughs> it's horrible. We don't want that. No. Blending is... It looks like overlaid film, which is exactly what it is. It's blending frames, so you kind of you you almost see it like overlapping like this. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, and then optical flow is sort of pixel to pixel, but if you have too much motion, it gets floopy. Floops. Floopsy. Floops. Floops. You miss the right stretch. Oh yeah. Nice. Rally chords. I love Frances's hair. She looks like. Like the girls from Virgin Suicide. Ooh, excellent film. Yeah. Yeah. Such a good Great film. soundtrack. Everything. Is yeah, really Virgin cool. Suicide. That's a good one. That's that's a classic. That's uh, is that like Josh Hartnett's? Was he was in that right? Mm -hmm. Josh. Like that was like a big breakout film. Yeah, for I remember he would, like came out to the song Heart. Mmm. Crazy. Was that it for was crazy? Crazy. Crazy. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's all right. Woo so good. So good. So good. That was me up there. Not actually me, but I was up there at one point. Um, someone asked, what am I using? Uh, I'm using I-O space and comma to nice. like all the little. Look, I know I know like three shortcuts. That's all right. We're up to three. Oh, yeah. Ko is saying Twix store. Uh, yes. Twix store is a plugin for slow motion that you can use in After Effects. I was actually talking about it just before with um, DW. Yeah, it's awesome. It's a bit expensive, but it does amazing stuff. Does it really? It's amazing. And with amazing ex output comes, you know, a lot of render time to do that right. process. It's yeah. very, and it's complex. It's not just like drop it on, slow it down, and it's awesome. Like, yeah. You gotta tweak it, oh, okay. but it's amazing. Oh, that's good to know. It's really, really good. I am teasing, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. Any tips to fix to make this? Loads of, wow, why can't I read right now? Yeah, uh, loads of 60 frame on a 24 frame talent. Any tips to fix this to make a travel video? Um, why would you wanna, when you say fix, Akash, do you mean no reason you can't have 60 frame on a 24 frame timeline. Are you trying to do time remapping though? Do you want the 60 to play at 24 so that it's automatically slowed down? Because if you throw 60 in a 24 frame timeline, it'll play, it'll look real time, but it won't be slowed down. It just depends on what you want. Hey Jason. How, how, do, how am I supposed to pronounce his name? When? No, I know that the first name I think. Qua. I said Koa. <laughs> nice. Did you say that just now? I blew it, yeah. Just now? Just now. I, I'm so sorry, Qua. <laughs> I am Vietnamese. I'm full of Vietnamese. <laughs> You're also a little delayed in time. Why? Because I said it like 30 seconds ago. Oh. Um, yeah, it's okay. You're focused. The audience Qua, I apologize. Me. Just trying to do our best to read. Yes, too much disturbing motion can can be uh, can cause issues in in any uh, time remap plugin. All right, Quaz, very thankful. Yes. Oh, you guys! This is like ASMR, like stones crunching under the feet. All right. You can enhance that, you know, if you really want to make it true ASMR. Yes. Mm -hmm. You have to take out all the rumble. Oh yeah, we and, can do all that. And just leave the crunch. Oh, listen to this. Cowbell. Isn't that sweet? They're so pretty. <laughs> 
they are so that's like pretty. all of my videos. All of your videos i have to like listen to myself like just in awe all the time right. and i'm like i sound so like simply pleased <laughs> No, wait, are you dragging these in as yeah. we're doing this? Or you're okay, okay, you got a nice, you have a long time. Okay. Yeah, see, I just like go all in. Yeah. And you're kind of just dragging it all into one track, too. You're not even like nope. stacking or, okay. I'm gonna, that's like, that's like the part where I feel like it feels like painting once mm -hmm. like I get everything um, yeah. going like that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I feel like. I can't believe we're already 40 minutes in. Wow, 46, yeah. Wow. Time's flying. I know, I feel like, okay, so I'm gonna work on this and make sure the full timelines happen in tomorrow so that we can really That's play right. around with yeah, it. That's right, yeah, we're footage reviewing and, and doing little tips and tricks here. Finally, a video with unironic cowbell, <laughs> right? <laughs> nice one, dude. So enough of that section. Let's go for like the more, the prettier parts. Mm. Maybe get this shot. Oh, I didn't like this shot. This shot. Mm -hmm. Rupam, you're asking about pixel aspect ratio. Well, obviously the, you know, uh, the 4K flavor of that. 3840, 2160, 720p, 1280, 1.0 pixel aspect ratio. Um, obviously you've got different aspect ratios based on how your footage was shot. It will affect the resolutions as well. If you're shooting with red, you know, they have different flavors of 4K. Sometimes it's a uh, 1.2. Not 1.33, that's like HDP. Um, but yeah, 2.0 is like super, super cinema. Anamorphic. Oh, that's a cool shot. I'm shooting through like a... Like a little window. Little window, that's neat. Yeah. And then I think this is like easier to show you guys um, because I definitely, this was a little bit more strategic on her camera. I was going through my other footage before. Eating apples. Some ASMR for you right there. Oh, nice. Evil Series has got your <laughs> blog and your YouTube links up there right now. Oh, that's so sweet. So now, just in terms of the narrative, because I haven't seen the narrative that's going over this, what's what's the story that you're telling here exactly? So, um, I have this little script I wrote. This letter, I just, I, this is my first draft, so I don't know if I'd like actually go about it, but um, let's see. Dear individuality, I've watched you struggle, thrive, embrace, blah, 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 blah. But anyways, I so that's why I wanted to do this like little voiceover and right. then put it over. Yeah. Um, I don't think it has much to do with it other than like that really ideological like, yeah. vibe to it. Sure. Um, well, here's a thought. I mean, okay, so we're 48 minutes in. How about we do like, let's keep assembling the timeline, but I think we should record the voiceover today too and just get that in there. So maybe that'll kind of, maybe you can even start assembling a little bit or kind of yeah, slipping, let's do that. sliding. Okay, yeah. And maybe in the meantime, um, I'll go grab the, you keep working, I'm going to go grab the mic that we're going to use. Oh my gosh. Right, I'm going to record my voiceover, um, <laughs> you know, to get my audio component for this track. Because I'm like blind and I need to make this bigger. So with this part, I was like really, um, I was a little bit more thoughtful filming this part, like. So there's like that standalone, what's that called? The locked off shot mm -hmm. of me getting onto the thing. But I also like took videos of this too. So, you know, I can essentially drag this over. Oh, I didn't mean to replace the audio. How do I get the audio to not be, oh, I just have to move the audio down here, huh? Yeah, that or you can turn off the, the track targets. 
So if you don't want it to go to one or two hands. Mm. This one? Oh, I see. Oh, I turned that back on too. It's okay. You can, and also if you don't want that audio, it sounds like that there's no audio that you need there anyway. Yeah. Typically what I will do is actually unlink and just get rid of it. Or when you're dragging it from here, just drag the video. So you don't even have to deal with the audio at all. Oh, okay. Yeah, unlink. Is there a shortcut to unlink? Probably. <laughs> that we don't know about. I don't use the shortcuts. I don't use them. Uh, so Coco's I... asking, how did you start making videos? Random idea or just a feeling? Can you remember the first video that you made? Um, let's see. How did I start making videos? I my friends started telling me to make a YouTube video. Well, actually before um, in high school, I made, I was right. Vlogging. Yeah, yeah, you I talked was about this. So yeah. young. Um, I don't know. I just, I just like being able to talk to a camera. It feels like I'm talking to somebody. And the first video I made was probably that one. Um, ooh, look, a Yeti. Um, was probably that one video I did with my friend Ted. Uh, I just opened up my MacBook and turned on the. Uh, the photo bucket? What's that one? The f photo booth. Yeah, photo booth. Yeah, I just recorded myself on photo booth <laughs> and I uploaded Classic. it. And it was just like very, very simple right. cutting, but right. that was fun. It was like for my like 100th post. Right. Oh, okay. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So I'm just going to get this set up for you in the meantime. Do you use the Yeti? Do you use this? No. You know, I used yeah. to have one, and then, um, you know. I'm, uh... So what I basically just did right now, just to create, like, some sort of layering, is I took this clip of my feet walking, and then I unlinked it, and then moved that over so you can hear my... Yeah. And then I will use the... One of my favorite tools is the slip tool, which is Y, and it um, basically allows you to move like the clip around to get a, to a part that you really like. I'm just gonna keep moving that until I feel like it hits the. tool to, or the V key to get me back to my arrow so crunch crunch and I'll move this clip a little bit over let's show that From this to this, so I'm gonna take this B roll shot and move it over there. Oh, now it sounds off. Okay. Now I'll just shorten this. <clears throat> How does that look so far? always like to unlink soundtracks so I can extend them longer or shorter. Are you ready for me? I'm ready for you. Whenever though, but like I said, keep assembling and you know when you're when you're ready to take uh, to take the, the pause. Oh glad you like downloaded Lipology and like great, that's awesome. Yeah, SM7B. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't have we don't have one of those here. And uh, yeah, as I was saying, I, so as USB mics go, you know, 
for any Harry Potter fans out there. Frankly, it's USB or XLR, but you know, the microphone, the wand chooses the wizard, the microphone chooses the voice, the voiceover artist. Um, not all mics sound good on all voices. What's the shortcut when you're like using the slip or even if you're moving um, a clip? Inside to move the video, uh -huh. I think it's Y. Oh, I know that, but yeah. like, you know how you want to move it like just an inch and you don't want to drag it? Is there a shortcut? Oh, that... nudge? Yeah, like to nudge, nudge. You have to look and clip. I don't remember what the shortcut is. I think it's one of the brackets or something. You just want to move it a frame? Yeah, I like to like nudge a little bit, you know. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm just a shortcut novice. I don't have my, my logic keyboard with me. I can't <laughs> it's okay. I'm not familiar with Tonor. You know, the truth is that uh, so so many of the newer mics are they're, they're, they're copies, you know, sort of mimicked copies of very famous microphones. They don't really have the same, they don't have the same capsules, they don't have the same construction, and they're all sort of okay, they're all, they're all decent. Not so long ago they all, you know, used to be like lousy. Now they're all pretty good, you know. But having said that, some, like in particular, this does not sound good on my voice at all. This, this Yeti, it sounds Why? terrible. It just sounds crunchy and thin. Um, doesn't work for my voice. Do I use a microphone when I film? Uh, not, not really. Um, usually use the audio off of like my vlog camera, which mm -hmm. is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, well, I do have a Rode mic. In right. this footage, in particular, I used a Rode mic. Some of um, it's Rode, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and Rodes—they're another good example. I mean, they're they're inexpensive alternatives to what used to have, would have been a Sennheiser or something that was five times the cost. Mm -hmm. Um. Sennheisers may sound better in some situations, uh, may have you know multiple polar patterns, some more options, but it's kind of hard to beat it for the the the, uh, the value for the the cost. Um, Rode really changed a lot of things and kind of opened up the market um, greatly. And yeah, Rode in conjunction with a 5D or a D800 or something, you know, any any. DSLR or mirrorless or anything can, can make a huge difference. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know that one, Mayor, but yeah, I mean, for $25, I mean, that's, that's very inexpensive. And I'm assuming that's supposed to be some kind of Neumann clone or something, you know. Um. <clears throat> Sorry, I wish my process was more interactive, but it's like so much thinking of like how to tell the story. Yeah. Well, no, but that's what I mean. It'll be interesting once you kind of laid this down and then we record the voiceover and throw it in there to see how yeah. how like the basic sequence works. Yeah. So maybe... So this is kind of like... out. Of, how out far in are you already, time-wise? Um, about like a minute in. Okay. But this is like a more of like a a nicer way of like. Mm -hmm. Actually, how do I make this bigger again? You want to make it full scale? Yeah. yeah. So this is kind of what I have so far. Sorry, I was so quiet doing this, but basically I just took all this footage, played around with the audio, and just try to like layer everything. And I think like with the voiceover and <laughs> music, it's gonna look a lot more polished. This is just me roughing it right now. Like this shot. Yeah. Now that last shot, you could probably, that might be where you wanna slip to go where it's a little later in time where it wasn't shaky or mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah, I'll probably slip that. Yeah. And then this one I need to slip too. So like, so she's already sitting down, but I wanna get that cut of her before that. So I'm gonna use Y here mm -hmm. and I'm gonna slip it over. And what's nice is like when you slip, you can kind of see right. on the left what um, where you're starting off. So right. I want to get her like right, right before she puts her head down. I think. Let's see. Maybe not like this. 
NTG8. Yeah, that's that's a that's a nice road. Rupam, I was actually asking if Rachel used any stabilizers, so no. Um, sometimes you'll stabilize if something's really, really shaky, but um, generally no. And I don't know if uh, there was any stabilization. I don't know what lens you were using on the 5D, if you had an image stabilizer mm -hmm. on there, but yeah. My homegirl did not use things. But there are a lot of, a lot of these were locked off, They're tripod shots. So. I really want to know what the nudge tool is. Here, I'll see if I can just find the shortcut for you. I find it in the shortcut menu. <clears throat> Do you know the graphical shortcut menu? Mm -mm. I'll, I'll show you. Let me find it and I'll show you. I think it's so important to make sure that like all the shots look tied in together. And like just that slight frame can like totally throw off the video. Totally, yeah. And again, that's the sequencing, pacing. That's the, that's really the key that makes the difference, you know? I'm so nervous. Oh, you're good. Okay, hold on a second. Let's go change this real fast. So you ready to do so voiceover now? Yeah, let's do this. It's gonna sound so cheesy, but we'll just play around with it as we go. Okay. So here, let me let me just show you something in the meantime. Go mm -hmm. back to Premiere for a second. Maybe we can find it on screen. So go to the Premiere Pro menu, keyboard shortcuts. And nice. it's your graphical shortcut key editor. And if if you don't see nudge, try the modifiers. So command, command shift. Just shift. You can also just search on nudge. Yeah, is nudge even like, not, what if I don't call it nudge? Sometimes I find myself calling it things that just doesn't really exist. Nudge, oh my god, April, command or control. Yeah, here, left. nudge selection. So yeah, there's like, and I never even know what these symbols are. Is that command or control? That's why I can't do keyboard shortcuts. I don't know what that symbol's supposed to be. Um, here, here they all are. So if you if you searched on nudge, nudge selection up, nudge selection down, so left five control. frames, left one frame. Oh, that does not work for me. There you go. Oh, so it's command plus left for left for one frame. And command right for one frame right. Let's see. A command. Girl, thank you. It was command, the one with the little flower. Yeah, that's right there. Yes, amazing. Keyboard shortcut editor, love that. Okay. So what I'm saying, I do not deserve to be on the show <laughs> at all. All right, so here we go. Let's. Uh, you ready for voiceover? Yeah, let's do the Wanna video. Do it? Okay. okay. So here, let's just get a little signal on you. This mic is also super sensitive. So I'm just gonna move this. This is creating a little bit. It's also super like um, interesting to do voiceover because you want it not to sound so cheesy. So it's like your tone. I honestly like re-record voiceover so many times yeah. because sometimes it can sound so melodramatic. But for for this um, this session's sake. Yeah. Okay. All right, so. Um, you know, I'm not gonna even go through the whole thing. I'm just gonna go through like, like one paragraph of it. Yeah. So that we have it just to. Okay. Here, and in fact, maybe we just so that you're kind of on axis with the mic. So I'll just. Okay. Yeah. Same here, Skyhawk. Okay. okay. Whenever you're ready. Even more now, our world has become so homogenous that a singular screen becomes an estranged mirror to everything we see at once. With these kinds of challenges, it's becoming harder and harder to hang on to your sense of self and aspirations. If for a moment you lost your tracking, that's okay. It's normal, but I want to remind you, it's not impossible to overcome. Step outside your box and let nature cleanse your soul. Give yourself that immediate mental restart button you so deserve through an environmental, foreign, sensory experience. Turn off your data and be present, allowing the only viewable screen to be the HD window to the world around you. Observe, acknowledge, digest. However, 
Remember to not absorb vapidness so naively, and that much of our commercialistic living is a forced connection. Instead, emphasize your opinions. Overwhelm yourself with a heightened empowerment, and remember there's a difference between settling down and keeping the door open. And whatever the case is, when confronted by a version of yourself, do not allow yourself to manifest a guilt that you aren't doing enough. Let me say that. When confronted by a version of yourself, do not... Wow. <laughs> when confronted by a version of yourself, do not allow yourself to manifest a guilt that you aren't doing enough. My hope is that one day... My hope is that one day is... Wow. Is that... Is that... <laughs> on the fly editing of your copy yes. always my hope is that one day you know you're going to be doing your best you will always fall into good and bad decisions that continue you will always fall into good and bad decisions that continue to define you and mold you into the best version of yourself ultimately be kind ultimately be kind and open we don't do that enough and that healthy interaction with yourself, your space, and your souls will grow you into something beautiful and unique. Love, Rachel. All right, let's do the very last one because you kind of you got the chair noise and then do the first two because we had some clickies. Love, Rachel. The first one? Uh -huh. I think the first two paragraphs, the first, I guess just the first paragraph maybe. Even more now, our world has become so homogenous that a singular screen becomes an estranged mirror to see everything at once. With these kinds of challenges, it's becoming harder and harder to hang on to your sense of self and aspirations. If, for a moment, you lose your tracking, that's okay. It's normal. But I want to remind you, it's not impossible to overcome. Okay, nice. So I'm gonna save this for you. Does Premiere have a voice recording delay? Oh, sure, you can record directly into Premiere. I, I, I generally don't, and there's two reasons why. One, um, there's a bit more perceived latency on the Premiere side, particularly with USB mics of this nature. Mm -hmm. Two, um, as Evil Cerise pointed out, Audition, which you're looking at here, this is the dedicated audio recording oh, yeah, app. Yeah. Um, for one thing, not only can I see um, a very large display of the waveform that's happening, which is key, um, I just like looking at the metering in here. I, I, I don't ever record directly into, into Premiere. Makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I've done it. Yeah. I, I wouldn't do it for something like this. Yeah. Um, I think I record into um, uh, QuickTime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll use QuickTime. Well, and you could, and here's why you should use Audition, too, because now, again, this is one of these interesting things. So this is what's called the spectral frequency display. Uh -huh. And this is showing you frequency over time. Uh -huh. So obviously all of this stuff, this is you talking, right? Looks like flames. Yeah, it looks like flames. So you've got frequency along the vertical axis here. You have time along the X, and color is amplitude. So the brighter the color, so again, like the fundamentals of your voice, these bright yellow orange sections, uh -huh. that's the, there's the most amplitude at that frequency. And then you can see as it gets higher and higher, it starts to kind of gradient go into orange, into red, into oh, purple. Okay. The darker the color, the quieter the signal. So where it's black, oh, darkness, there's nothing. What you can see here too is that probably because of the power and everything in this room, we it's have like a hundred, a there's a hundred hertz tone permeating throughout the entire thing. Wow. You can't see that in Premiere. Right. You would spend time trying to fix, remove, repair that in Premiere and not know why it simply wasn't coming out. Uh -huh. Seeing it here, we can now get rid of this really easily. Very cool. Yeah. Look at that. I know Jason is very in his element. He knows what's up. He like has a talk show and everything. Yes, that's why. <laughs> and yeah, again, this is why I don't I don't uh, record it. Jason needs to have an ASMR channel. I want an app or mic that makes me sound British. Same. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't isn't there one of those? I thought I thought I thought there was one. I don't know. But I like that you can change Siri's voice to be British. Yeah. Or Australian. You see what I just did using um, making a selection of the frequency. I was able to pull it out mm -hmm. without actually destroying any of your vocal frequencies. That's very impressive. Now this is the other thing about the Yeti, though. Now again, I said it's kind of bright and crunchy for me, who has a lot of low end. 
your voice isn't low, but you actually do have some low tonality that comes through naturally、uh-huh. when you speak. This does not capture that for you. Wow. Yeah. So really, you're literally like digest, like dissecting. I'm dissecting my voice. Yeah. A sound very visually. That's、yeah. so bizarre. Yeah, and using Photoshop tools to do it, right? So you can see like there's the marquee,、What? there's the paintbrush. That's so crazy. Spot healing.、Yeah. That's so crazy. Yeah. So、um, and then in fact, all this other noise down here. Did you know you can use a notch filter as well to see if the sounds consistent? Yeah, I mean notch filtering is okay. The thing is,、um, again,、uh, notch filtering typically you're also working off of subsequent harmonics, which, in turn, for something like this, it's going to change that sound. And also,、um, this was a pretty、uh, confined fundamental at a hundred. Now there's also something going on down here in the subsonic range at around thirty hertz. That's just room noise, so we're just simply going to delete that and take it out entirely. So this will be com- very non-destructive. You wouldn't hear any difference because you can actually see, really, where your voice starts with this microphone. Let's play it back. I want to see what I sound like. Okay. I'm gonna change my output here. Now I'm not a huge fan of notch filter for voice recording. There are other applications where I think it can be really、um, more effective. But for voice, it can be a little, a little destructive. Even more now, our world has become so homogenous that a singular screen becomes an estranged mirror to everything we see at once. That sounds amazing. With these amazing. kinds of challenges, it's, it's becoming harder and harder to hang on to your sense of self. Now you wouldn't have heard it on these speakers, of course, but if this were playing on like proper speakers,、yeah. on your desktop or whatever, you would have heard that plus. Oh. Right. <laughs> like if I use like what is that like earbuds? In earbuds, you would have heard it. Yeah. Can you? So the boo is still in there? No, no, no. It's gone. I took、oh, it out.、Okay. Yeah.、Wow. And I took out any of the sort of subsonic rumble that just naturally was kind of occurring in the room. Cedric, yes, Jason took over the stream because you can learn way more from him than me. <laughs> okay. So here.、Um, now I could probably airdrop this to you. Wonder, can I airdrop this to you? Yes. Yes. Wow. Are you any of those, Rachel? There you go. Okay. Wow. There's so many people here. So here you go, Rachel's MacBook. Except, thanks, Jason's Retina too. There you go. Bam. Bam. We're back in action. Back in action. So let's see. Let's drop this into this. What did Isotope Ozone Microphone Doll? A twofold. Yes, Isotope Ozone, very nice、uh, third-party plugin, which you can, of course, also use in Premiere Pro for recording too. So yeah, just to clarify, you can absolutely record audio directly into Premiere. I prefer not to. Personal choice. I wish that like. When you're doing voiceover, it has like it closed captioned underneath, so you can like see what you're working on, but you don't. Uh, let's see. I remember that's unedited, so I didn't like cut out where you restarted and stuff. So you'll you'll have to cut that on the fly. But yeah. That's well, the, I know that we said the last. We、paragraph. said and we said the first right, and first we said the last、paragraph. part twice, and then we said the first part again at the very end. So. So I know what I'm looking yeah. at. So. Yeah. Screen becomes an estranged mirror to see everything at once. With these kinds of challenges, that sounds so good. Sounds good. You sound great. Now here's one other little tip that, again, just as the audio geek and please I mean, audio geek. Yeah. So these are these are what this is what's called rectified waveforms. So、mm-hmm. here you can you know you can make them bigger just by、um, gesturing over the audio track and two finger. You can zoom it. The audio track header there. Yeah. Oh, I see. Right. This is called rectified.、So、you're only seeing、oh, yeah. like half of the audio waveform, which for me, I guess it's okay. It's a mono file, but if you go into the flyout menu here and turn off rectified audio waveform, oh, now you see what I saw, and then、That's、you can make、cool. it much bigger. So you just really can. It's also easier to see your edits. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot you can do that. Yeah. Done that. Again, some people love the sort of half, half look. So 
I'm gonna mute this track where I'm just gonna leave that part, but leave this part so I can play over it. Okay, let's see. Thanks, Max VFX. If Android had airdrop, yeah. I'm trying to read all of you guys. Uh, the voice recorder and Premiere, it, it can't process VST. That's a good question. I, you know, I've, I can't say that I've done it. I don't think it processes plugins on live input. Audition, of course, can. Um, I could try it real quickly for you. I want to say I, I wouldn't think so, but maybe. Mm -hmm. Even more now. Or we'll oh, well, I have to turn down. How do I do this again? What are you trying to do? I'm trying to lower the, the volume on one track. The actual volume mm -hmm. of the track or the clip? The track, this this whole track. So go to the window Oopsies. and pull up your track mixer, audio track mixer. Oh yeah. Which is shift eight. Shift eight. <laughs> no idea, sorry, just hit the mic there. Cerise's comment there. Even more now, our world has become so homogenous. It's nice. You can already feel it sort of like gluing together. Yeah. Even just quickly, and then I'm also hearing, envisioning what the music would be like. Yeah, let's just throw a track and roll yeah. quick. Yeah. Something kind of. Had a track in mind. We'll just mm -hmm. let's just throw it in, just okay. so we can we can really feel this out. Which is pretty calm. <laughs> do do do. <laughs> so much logging in. You know, <laughs> it's. Well, I actually just like cleared out like my browsing history because oh. I was so afraid like what was gonna come up. I don't know why. It's not like I'm looking at anything scary, but Dude, I'm just terrified of everything. Cracking me up. Let's see. So I have all these songs that I've saved. Let's just look for one that like already has a download link. Download, download, download. Yes. Nice. Ooh, that song was so good, but I don't think I would use it for this. Okay. Drudy. Is that this right now? So I was just kind of testing to see. Let's see. Wow, that sounds cool. Yeah, so um, to answer your question there, yes, you can monitor live audio recording with VST effects as you're recording it in Premiere. So um, yeah, Mayor, you asked that, right? So yeah, you can. I was just doing it with the reverb there. I don't know that you, I had to keep the volume down because otherwise it'll feed back into itself. But I, I kind of like that echo. Yeah, well, that's why I did a huge uh -oh. echo on here. Yeah, so you could reverb. see. Yeah, reverb, exactly. So yeah, listen, you'll hear it as I'm. That's from this? No, no, it's just my microphone on here, but mm. you're hearing it reverberate, right? So uh, it does work. Very cool. Wow, yeah. that sounds like a cool effect. Yeah. <clears throat> so many unnecessary audio tracks right now. You know what? Let's just not have this one. Yeah, we just happen to be working on Mac. I mean, uh, I work on both. Um, my uh, HP. 8740 mobile workstation, which I've had for five or six years, which had um, 
NVIDIA K2000 or K3000, really nice video card. It just kind of died on me, so... <clears throat> yeah, well, it was my backup system. I'm, I'm primarily a Mac Mac editor user, but um, obviously our stuff runs on both, so I need to be able to test it and do stuff on both. Oh, nice. Okay, so now I nice. have to go into A3 yep. and lower the sound on that. So yep. Well, this one seems like it just went for the whole... Yeah, that's the master. That's for everything. So yeah, you would just do oh, this okay. one right here. And this is a good opportunity, you know, to label your tracks there. Oh. So give it, give it the name okay, or whatever. Let's see. So that's let's like see. camera audio, right? Yeah, camera audio. <clears throat> let's see. Audio two is gonna be voiceover VO. Audio three is song. So I'm gonna bring down the song quite a bit. I'm gonna leave that there and leave camera audio down. And that's what I love about Premiere is like being able to fix all that all at once. It's like mm -hmm. just an overriding yep. totally. thing for everything. Even more now, our world has become so homogenous. Let's turn on the music just a little bit more. And if we add a little compression to your voice. Yeah, how do we do that? Let's uh, twirl down the track mixer here. This little triangle right at the top. Oh yeah. This is your effects insert, and you go to that first section, the very first one. Mm -hmm. You're in like number three, just like move up. Oh, yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. And click on the arrow area there. You go to amplitude oh, nice. and compression. I want to do this on. Oh, yeah, wherever the voiceover is, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, wait, did I go? How do I get back from there? No, you're right. You're in the right spot. Okay. Yeah. And amplitude and compression, and do tube modeled compressor. Wow. And then if you double click on it and go to the preset menu, uh -huh. there's a couple that are for voiceover at the bottom, like oh, voiceover, wow. voice thickener. Do you think my voice needs to be thicker? Um, so here's a, here's a here's like a pro tip. Uh -huh. On your laptop speakers, yes, it sounds I mean it sounds nice, but you can't judge thickness because there's no bass. Oh, I see. So that might make it a little too too much. Right. So this is where you want to listen either with like headphones that you know mm -hmm. or decent speakers or whatever. Yeah. But we could try that one first. It, it, if nothing else, it should probably get a little bit louder um, and just a little more aggressive sounding. Even more now, our world has become so homogenous really that a right singular screen becomes an estranged mirror to see. Oh, I really love this video. How do I go back to the oh, audio clip? Let's bring this in a little bit more. Even more now, our world has become so homogenous that a singular screen. So I like that part where it says there's this gap right here, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is to keep up with the beat is I'm gonna move over that yep. one track. That's cool. So it feels like yep. flipped in there. So homogenous that a singular screen becomes an estranged mirror to see everything at once. With these kinds of challenges. I think with every pause, I'm going to just change mm -hmm. it over. Yeah, I think that's good. That'll like also stretch it out. Mm -hmm. um. I'm in a strange mirror to see everything at once. With these kinds of challenges, it's becoming harder and harder. Maybe I don't want the audio that loud on A1. Let's turn that down too. Yeah, all the camera sound, right? Yeah. That a singular screen becomes in a strange mirror that's to see everything nice at that once. Sounds like your voice is really... With these kinds of challenges, it's becoming harder and harder to hang on to your sense of self and aspirations. If Ooh. that sounds well, harder to hang on to your sense of self and aspirations. If for a moment, <laughs> yeah, like that. <laughs> crunch, crunch, yeah. crunch. Evil series. Let's go into track automation, right? Is there a way? Yeah, there is a way. How do I do it again? I feel I just I just re-downloaded this like the the new one so I'm like mm -hmm. I don't know where anything is. What are you looking for? Oh, audio game. Oh okay. Just for this one particular the mm -hmm. the sound crunching was a little much. I'm just gonna turn that down a little bit in this particular clip. It is it's becoming harder and harder to hang on to your sense of self and aspirations. It's a little off, but we're getting somewhere. Oh, what's up, Leon? Leon from the Netherlands. Vanessa also in the Netherlands. Thanks, Skyhawk. I have to re-say that now. Did you say hom homogenous? I didn't go homogenous. 
Did you? Oh, I said homogenist. Did you? I guess. Oh, I oh, didn't. God. I didn't. I didn't catch it. Kinds of challenges. Gather the crowd, Cedric and Gus. Comes in a strange. Recorded is... live in front of many now, on Twitch. <laughs> Released so on nervous. Spotify. I mean, can I can I can like kind of hack my audio so like that sound goes down right. I can like almost cut oh, it. Oh, you could fade. Yes, you could do a, a quick fade to get out the T consonant if it's yeah. in there. Sure, that's legit. That is yeah, so I'm just gonna. IBC. Our annual, our annual visit, Leon. Looks like I'll be uh, potentially seeing Cedric there as well, right, dude? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See. Okay. So the delay. You, you you typed it before I could even say it. All right. We're getting somewhere. Mm-hmm. Kyle, what's up? Dude, you are too kind and awesome. You can catch Kyle, who's also been on Adobe Live uh, here on Creative Cloud Channel. In fact, Kyle, I think you're you're the thumbnail for um, for I think the like the live stream playlist. I'm pretty sure. If not, I know you're the thumbnail for one of the sections of our live stream. <laughs> of course, Jason knows everything and everyone. No, no, I can't no. walk around Adobe with everyone no, being like, no, "Oh, Jason, no, you're." No, that's. <laughs> <laughs> so popular. Oh, god, embarrassing. I feel like I'm like in the middle of a friend group and I'm like catching up with everyone. I'm like, that's yeah. right. They're making new friends. Making new friends. That's right. Friends. New, new and old. That's right. What did you guys cover when you guys, um, when you were with um, D? Uh, the oh, DW. DW. Oh yeah. Uh, so we were covering her um, her series. Um, that's my DJ. Uh -huh. uh, were you guys going over how she edits? Yeah. So um, her editor Simone, we actually were in the time in her timeline for um, one of the later seasons, but and uh -huh. she was actually showing the full cut. Oh, that's cool. And that uh, oh, was really neat. I mean, it was really cool and. Um, what we sort of uh, uh, sort of revealed there, because I was I was sort of referencing I'd watched I binge watched it, mm -hmm. and um, that's it's fantastic, fantastic viewing. That's so cool. And I was I was making points early on before we even got to the time. I'm like, wow, you know, there's not a lot of cuts, and you you you're really like the frame is lingering, which is not common today, right? Typically today, well, yeah. like cinematic style and this is like all about EDM and the scene and in, uh -huh. in, in, in Toronto you're used to like tick, 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 but there's all these lingering shots that were so beautiful and then you see the cuts and then you see like how it was designed and how she used cool slow-mo and speed up ramps oh, to, cool. to go along with the beat kind of what you're again like sequencing and pacing timing, right timing. Yeah. really really cool that's cool. I'm excited for Adobe Max. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. MC, thank you very much. That's so sweet. Thanks for oh, coming yeah. in. April, you said <laughs> I didn't see you. I probably did. Okay, kind of got that audio clip going. It's normal, but I want to remind you, it's not impossible to overcome. Mm. Yes, and as you just saw via Nightbot, um, again, we have a, the Make It Impactful contest going on right now. Um, chance to win $1,000, Year of Creative Cloud, and a one-to-one. -one. Yeah, Kiara. Tete Aww. a tete. Thanks for tuning in, Kiara. Hey, thanks, Where Kiara. Where do I find my music for your videos? Oh, you just missed it. But um, we were just talking about how um, I, I just like look on SoundCloud forever and try to Shazam things. And if it's Shazamable, I can't use it. And if not, I can. It's green. Um, this song in particular is definitely um, something that I probably won't be able to use. Right. Well, I won't be able to monetize off of it. Right. Um, test that. Test that later. Um, while that question is being asked, fantastic you question. You're so sweet. Thank you Good so segue. much. Good um, segue. Let me see if I'm logged in here. <laughs> Dude, oh cool! 
Oh, I'm not logged in, but that's okay. Hey man, if I can have you switch to my screen real quickly. Um, so we have uh, many partners who create panels for Premiere Pro. And uh, this one that you're seeing here is called Audio Network. Now this is a production music library. Wow. I did not say stock music library because uh -huh. stock music, what does that mean to you? Cheesy, campy, jingly. <laughs> right, like <laughs> muted trumpets in an elevator, right? Yeah. Kind of. That was uh, a very specific. That was no. very specific <laughs> reference. I know. Some, sometimes I'm a little too granular. But anyway, um, no, this is a production music library that is actually created by artists. So uh -huh. um, I almost went to work for Muzak. Like actual the Muzak company. Really? <laughs> years ago. And I suddenly felt my hair turn a different color, my whole being change. <laughs> and I can't do this. Not that there's anything wrong with Muzak. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But it just wasn't me because it was really not something you'd listen to. The audio network panel here um, is tens of thousands of original pieces of content. Oh, that's good to know. Let's play something from indie. Yeah, so like we can go into some of these categories here, and there's all you can obviously sort and sift down and you know see what it is. But we um, have to pay for the songs too. Well, yeah. So this is now your, but now there's different licensing oh, for YouTube. There's all different kinds of things, and it's different pricing structures. Um, I mean, that's kind of so hard as like someone starting out. It is. It is, and it's again like. As opposed to just finding free stuff. Yeah. This is like if you're doing slightly bigger productions or client based productions and right. you just don't want to have that headache of, all right, right it didn't, I didn't find it in Shazam, so we should yeah. be good. Yeah. I sent the guy on SoundCloud an email and he didn't get back to me, so, you know, <laughs> that happens. we're cool. Um, but yeah, let me see if I can just play a couple seconds of some of these. Like, what's nice is um, it gives you like the key, the tempo. Nice. Um, you know. Good for more client-based projects. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know. But yeah, I don't know. For for my videos in particular, I like to just use, um, I always make playlists when I go places. Yeah. So I'm always like looking for new music and I'm very inspired by the surroundings I'm in. And that's how I kind of found this. Like in this case, I was hanging out with Francis, and then she introduced me to Darudi Column, mm -hmm. which is probably why it's gonna make it in this video. Uh, so that's how I find I it. I want to remind you, it's not impossible to overcome. Do do do. So when we when we went in and we changed A to track to make that the compression, mm -hmm. anytime I add anything to A2, it's It will going. have the compression on there. That's so so nice. if you didn't want that, mm -hmm. let's say you only wanted it on the voiceover that's in track two, but not everything, yeah. you could also apply that same effect just to the clip. Oh, cool. Right, so Premiere understands clip-based right. effects and track-based. Track-based right. will be, yeah, you drop music in there, it's gonna have that compressor on there. Very but cool. you're not likely to put anything other than voice and like that's just good housekeeping, right? Yeah. Just put voice stuff. Yeah. yeah I just probably. need you to go over all like all of my projects and like <laughs> clean it up for me because he's obviously so much better than me. No, come on, dude. No. Dude, you're awesome. with the Where I love I have to be so again, the wand chooses the wizard, Harry. This is a great mic. For you. Yeah, I guess. Sounds See, terrible I had on this. my voice. I had this, yeah. but maybe it was because I wasn't in like such a soundproof room like this for it to sound good. Because it, which I mean, I'm sure you can play around. With yeah, that. and there are, you know, it's that's one of those things. There's a lot of those. I'm sure many of you have seen them where now you can buy like the, the vocal, the the portable vocal booth. It basically looks like wow. a like a half moon. Not a helmet, but like a U shape that is. It's all soundproofing. Oh, nice. And you talk into it, and what it does is it's not soundproofing anything it's just it's killing all reflection right that so makes it's sense. dead it's I mean sometimes I really like the lo-fi sound and I'll just like record it on my iPhone you know and and um, having said that I record 90% of any kind of interview stuff on camera with the iPhone voice recorder I've said that a million times on here. it's awesome and if you're in a fit quiet enough environment uh-huh yeah quality wise it's great it's really great with these kinds of challenges I'm just trying to find out where I'm starting so it's not possible. Come step outside your oh, box. Can we go That's back what to I'm going to now? look for. Step outside your box. Thank you, LNL. With these kinds of challenges, it's becoming harder and harder to hang on to your sense of self. Hmm. Where is that? 
Yeah, and Kiara and others who've asked, of course, you can watch the replays of all of today's uh, live streams immediately after we stop. And uh, they are archived here on the Creative Cloud YouTube channel, so you'll be able to see them. If for a moment you lose your tracking, that's okay. It's normal. Even but I want to remind you, so it's cool. not impossible to overcome. <laughs> you got the two playing simultaneously. One time I accidentally, I was showing my friend like how I edited my video and right. stuff like that and I had two tracks over because I hadn't fixed it enough and he just oh. started dying laughing because right. he imagined that's exactly what I sound like in my head. Right. Where, like, <laughs> I have like two voices in my head like overcoming each other. I understand this completely. <laughs> With I these kinds did. of challenges, <laughs> it's becoming harder and harder to hang on to your sense of self and aspirations. If for a moment you lost your track hand, possible to overcome. Step outside your box. There let nature cleanse you. Step outside your box. Outside your box. Step up. Okay. So there I am. So C tool cut. Choop. V. I'm just gonna delete this part. Nice. And then You're cruising now. So up. yeah. So uh, this is what I assumed. Like once you kind of have the the reference in there. Yeah. Now it's that really helped. Yeah. yeah, so it's gonna be cool when Step you play this in twenty minutes or so. Yeah, let's let's hear this part. Step outside your box. And then let's put it back into the track that mm -hmm. we compressed. We can hear the difference. Oh yeah. Oops. What will happen? Comes in a strange My music just turned on again. What did I do? I did something. What did I mess up? I messed up something. Our world has become so homogenous. Oh yeah, where'd your music go? Oh wait, I just muted it. There we go. Mm, where'd my music go? Impossible. Oh, I see. Oh, then I have to mute this. Now, do you ever color code your tracks? It's not impossible. Sometimes. So, why? Yeah, why is the music? Did you drop music on track two there? Oh, I did. It looks like you did. I see stereo. Yeah. Oh. I'm just gonna undo everything I just did because I clearly messed right. up something. So this is. Oh, I see what I did. Okay. Yeah. Oh god. So if you color code that to like pink or rose, I usually do music in rose or mango. Huh? <laughs> I usually do music in rose or mango. What do you mean? Go ahead and right click on the music loop. Which one? Oh, this one. Stereo. Yeah. And go to label. Oh, I yeah. see. So that way you just visually you won't. Ever mess Because I, I, I accidentally pull audio files all the time. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. That's good to know. <laughs> like all the time. <laughs> Ooh, from Rio. That's really cool. That's awesome. Singular screen What's up, Neolandi? Good night, Herr Malwurf. If for a moment. I have to find that Allowing the only viewable your box and let nature cleanse your soul. If for a moment you lost your tracking, that's okay. It's normal. But I want to remind you, it's not possible to overcome. Step outside. So I just use the L mm -hmm. shortcut to fast forward. There we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna use C tool, give that a little chop, choppity chop, V, and I'm just gonna delete that part. Step outside your box. And that's gonna sound, there we go, because I totally messed up. So I'm gonna drag that back up to A2. Mm -hmm. And let's hear it all compressed. Oh, and let's not mute this. And then, I don't know what I did, but let's just... It looked like you had the, the vocal track muted. Oops. <laughs> I'm such a mess, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> If for a moment you lose your tracking, that's okay. It's normal. But I want to remind you, it's not impossible to overcome. Step outside your box and let nature cleanse your soul. Give yourself that. Sometimes luck of the draw just happens where like, I didn't plan to have her step outside right, the box, but right. I said that. She just and did, I that know. That always happens to me when I edit. Mm -hmm. It's like, it just happens to like, oh wow, that went way better than I thought. Yeah. Um. That's starting to look good. Oopsies. Evil Cerise, um, yes, they are technically symmetrical, except when they're not. So if you have um, <clears throat> off-axis recordings, 
um, where someone is in the case of what we're doing right here, instead of speaking on axis to the mic, they're off axis. Or in terms of music, where you might have something like brass, which traditionally, if you record a trumpet, will actually have an off axis displayed waveform. Um, the uh, the rectified view is it's just it's a it's deceptive. But outside of that, just aesthetically, it's it's missing for me. It, it, particularly if you're doing you know tight cuts um, where you're trying to avoid any kind of click pop. I just I like having the full waveform so I can really see exactly where it is that I'm cutting from. Um, but yes, for a, a, a standard properly recorded, you know, which is most things, uh, symmetrical waveform. Right. There, there's no, you're not, you're not missing anything except visually. It just, to me, it's, it's, it's less effective for, for trying to cut. Oopsies. Exactly. Yes. DC offset. Right. Which you don't encounter too much today, but right. When you do have that, you'll have an asymmetrical waveform, which you can fix in audition. So. How come, um, when I'm dragging this clip in, my music, my sound's not coming in it too. Um, because oh, you were dragging, that's right, because you were dragging that. So just drag from, from the video clip instead. There we go. See, but it's not, the sound's not in there. Is there no sound in this? No, I'm hearing sound. I mean, the only viewable screen to be the HD window to the world of- Wee! Okay. Do, do, do. So what else can we talk about, guys? Ask me questions, because otherwise yeah. I'm just going to be sitting here focused and- No, you know. that's- uh, it's part of the process. I mean, I think people really like to see- to I mean, now, would you say, as we're kind of do- Oh, I love this shot. That's cool. Um, would you say this is like- this is your typical, this is what happens. This is like phase one, phase two. Yeah. And we haven't even gone through like half the footage, right? Or, no, or, yeah, yeah. not at all. But I wanted to definitely like. Uh, right. Kind of a best of right now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Only viewable screen to be the HD window to the wall. See, this shot looks really flat, so we could like go into color and mm -hmm. really color correct it and play around with it. Mm -hmm. Like. Oh, there's something about it that I really like. <laughs> Do you like the flatness? Yeah. This, it's just like, it doesn't match. It doesn't match, the, that's that's the thing. The it doesn't shot. quite match the previous shot as well. Um, and for something like that, I might double click on the previous one. So that's in the source. Kind of use it as a reference. Why is it not clicking into the source? Are you stuck? I'm stuck. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Oh. Oh, like, see, that's so warm. It's very warm, right? And this is actually cool. So you might, in basic, I mean, even maybe just a slight temperature adjustment might be all you need, and a little saturation. I want to brighten it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Let's so like see. pull up the highlights. So you can do all that in the basic panel. Right here. Yeah. Let's do exposure. Let's bring out the shadows. I kind of like like a more flat. Just warm it with temp. Yeah, see? You're getting closer already. Yeah. Hmm. Should I contrast? No contrast. Lights. No. I probably wouldn't put those two clips right next to each other. Yeah. Now you could also probably just, if you went into your either curves or um, you could um, yeah just like I would bring, yeah just bring up a little more of the reds a little bit yeah just to again kind of just thinking of that other oh shot. yeah it looks a lot better yeah Ooh. that's a bit much but it, you're closer though like it's you know yeah probably back it up a little bit yeah wait you can see just skin tone wise it looks in the same ballpark yeah ballpark yeah the wood in particular, actually, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look at how nice that looks now. Yeah. yeah. That looks great. Auto correct? I never really use auto correct when I. I I don't. Yeah, almost never. I 
it's interesting. I usually do it in um, in Lightroom, more to see what it thinks it should be, uh-huh. <laughs> and then. Oh, that's really smart, actually. Yeah, and then eighty percent of the time, I wind up undoing it and just doing it manually. Okay, let's see. Let's go to the part where. Does anyone edit with a Wacom tablet? You know, I don't I don't know of too many video editors. And I mean specifically video editors that do. I know a lot of yeah, and I see uh, I see just said I know a lot of After Effects um, users who use some kind of tablet, um, particularly when there's like, you know, animation and drawing of vectors involved. Um, I know some people do for editing. I I, I never found that it, it doesn't speed me up. I mean, shoot, you're talking to someone who still edits with mouse <laughs> and eight shortcuts. So, Rachel, any recommendations on starting a YouTube channel? That's a good one. Yeah. You know, I, it's, for 15 minutes left, maybe we should just like talk through things. Okay. But, yeah. Are you ready to, do you want to play? Like the reveal of where we are? Uh, yeah. I'll just edit. I'll just okay. continue finessing. But maybe answer that and then while you're, yeah. You guys can also watch me like pretend to play tennis because we weren't doing that well. Um, any recommendations, see. Let's see. I would say you probably watch YouTube already, and I would definitely try not to be influenced by what's on the internet right now. I think one of the most important things is being able to find that voice and that like void in the space that you want to um, branch into. And whether it's like, for me, when I create something, it's always because I want to see it myself and I'm not seeing it out in the world versus taking something that I like and wanting to mimic it. Um, So I think that's one of the things that I did when I started my YouTube channel is I just saw something that like was missing um, and that was kind of like a less a less like manicured version of lifestyle content. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's kind of my one of my recommendations like starting off but from there for the technical stuff i would say like just start filming just start filming and talking and whether you use the footage or not it doesn't really matter but you have all that to play with because i was filming myself for a whole year before i even knew what to do with the footage and there's so much footage of myself that like i actually haven't used um but it really taught me how to edit and on top of that it taught me knowing what to film so like i could understand what I was doing the footage for. Mm-hmm. So, hope that helps. Yeah. Do, do, do. Oh, this makes me want to go back to Austria. It's just so pretty. Francis doing the action. Let's see how those two look right next to each other. It's rendering, is that why? Yeah, because now you've got lumetry on there. So, um, one thing you can do, oh, but that doesn't happen, you can, you can drop your resolution, your playback resolution there. Um, to half, right? Is this a, no, that's not I think you're at half now, so maybe try quarter and see if that makes it better. Allowing the only. Oh, I think I just was lagging because it. I thought it was lagging because I couldn't hear the sound. I just muted it. Oh, okay. Allowing the only viewable screen to be the HD window to the world around you. Oh, that's still Observe. Available. Acknowledge. So try going to quarter. Res. Let's see if that improves it. the only viewable screen to be the HD window to the world around you. Observe. Oh, Acknowledge. There we go. I guess. However, remember. Okay, we'll just keep playing around here. Oh, so it's something I think you talked a little bit about on Make It. Do you have YouTube trolls and how do you deal with them? Mm-hmm. I actually haven't had too many. I usually just ignore them. Yeah, like, I mean, that's kind of. Because usually the trolls like just have the most like unintelligent things to <laughs> say. Like, if I usually find like if you're gonna go 
to that extent to troll somebody, right. you're not necessarily saying the most like intellectual things. Mm -hmm. But I mean, obviously there's people who have like constructive criticism or things to say. Sure. And if it's brought up in like a really respectable way, then like I will reply in that same manner. But right. I think like people who are just trolling just to troll, you just like ignore them. Right. Yeah. yeah. There's really, there's really no other. Hate is gonna hate is gonna always. Hate. Oof. <clears throat> Present, allowing the only viewable screen to be the HD window. But the HD window part, I think I might drag in, and like this timeline's really, really rough. But you know, like, you know, I can drag in that clip of the driving yeah. part. Okay, yeah. Don't feed the trolls. <laughs> You know what, I think I had, oh, you know what, that, maybe it's a cool shot for where that tunnel will be. Tunnel shot. Do, do, do. Although the clips don't go well together, but you know what I mean. Environmental, foreign, sensory experience. Turn off your data and be present, allowing the only viewable screen to be the HD window to the world around you. Let's disable that clip. But I want to remind you, it's not impossible to overcome. Step outside your box and Oh my god, this is two hours went by really fast. It was by quickly, and we now have <coughs> We are on our last three minutes. Okay, should I, should I just reveal so what I've go, yeah, done Yeah, let's go ahead so and let's do a full screen. Okay. And uh, we'll just let's, you know, take that. And are you cranked up all the way volume-wise? Just so I'm sure people can hear. Um, I could be. Let's do it. <laughs> all right. Anything's possible. How much footage do I end up shooting for a standard vlog? Quite a lot. I have a lot of footage here, but I was a little bit more strategic with it. Mm -hmm. I actually feel like I don't have enough. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, I always say it's better to film more than you think you right. need. Right. Totally. Even more now, our world has become so homogenous that a singular screen becomes an estranged mirror to see everything at once. With these kinds of challenges, it's becoming harder and harder to hang on to your sense of self and aspirations. If, for a moment, you lose your tracking, that's okay. It's normal. But I want to remind you, it's not impossible to overcome. Step outside your box and let nature cleanse your soul. That is so good. Give yourself that immediate mental restart button you so deserve through an environmental, foreign, sensory experience. Turn off your data and be present, allowing the only viewable screen to be the HD window to the world around you. Observe. Acknowledge. Digest. However, remember to not absorb vapidness so naively, and that much of our commercial is- Yeah. Yeah. You're getting somewhere. Getting somewhere. Telling the story. I love that, like, I can be productive and do this at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, like, some audio clip in here that I just, like, need a finesse. <laughs> Everyone's saying, hit render. Render to me to go to- Okay, should I render? There. Well, there I'm sure. rendering. You just hit enter to render, right? That's yeah. What now, doing. um... I was. I thought someone might say. You know, did you notice there was some moraying in there? You were getting the, like the patterns looked. Oh like. yeah, but I think and that's because I was in one quarter. It's because you're in one quarter. Yeah. There you go. Exactly. So uh, you should not see that. No. Um, mm. Hand Hand claps. All right, and we're yep. We got one minute left. So. Oh my gosh. Day one. Day one. Woo. Score done. Yes. All right. So what can we expect tomorrow in our last thirty seconds? Oops. Uh, what can we expect tomorrow? Well, yeah. I'm going to put this clip more together. You guys right. saw me, how I started it, how I started dropping things in, started right. the project. I'm probably going to clean it up a little bit more right. so that tomorrow um, there's more structure to look right. at. Maybe some titles, some motion titles, graphics, a little bit of something graphics. like that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. And maybe some color if we feel the need, adjustment yeah. layers, and yeah. we'll get into and some then, of that. Um, I'm going to play around with like this logo I made, Okay. and then I can show you guys. I think I did it here. I did that on Premiere. We're not on your screen. Oh. Okay, hold on one second. Real quickly. All right. This is our last thing before we go off. Oh. Well, so see. this was something actually that, yeah, you just worked on this. I just yeah. worked on this, yeah. <laughs> it's 
my new logo. <laughs> it's your new logo. Wee. Awesome. All right, that's chic. All right, well, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. It was great to have you with us this afternoon. Thank uh, be you. Be sure to catch us tomorrow morning, beginning at tomorrow. 9 a.m. Pacific time. Oh, and check out the contest, too. And check out the contest. Yes. Again, we'll $1, put that. $1,000. $1,000 and a one-to-one -one with Rachel and, and, one and or Julesy. Year. And a year of Creative Cloud. Yes. So much more to see. We've got Mount, uh, Mount Mograff kicking it off tomorrow at 9 a.m. Thank you so much for joining us. We Thank you so you much. Tomorrow. Bye. Bye, everybody.